I am here in defense of Tomb Raider from 2001 with Angelina Jolie because I grew up watching that movie, okay? I don't have any other qualifications, actually. I'm a film student. I grew up watching this movie, but I've never played the game. I don't know anything about Lara Croft as a character or the video game or anything. I don't even have a method of playing video games. I'm not a gamer. But I'm here to defend this movie because it is shit on so hard. <laughs> it is absolutely torn apart regularly and I think it deserves better than that. I'm just gonna get out of the way. Yes, this movie does not pass the Bechdel test. I don't care. That is not important to me, okay? Not important. And I'm okay with none of these characters being female characters. I don't need there to be a female protagonist versus female villain all the time. I'm okay with it all being dudes other than her. Like, I'm fine with that. So there are a couple quite literally stellar things about it that I just want to rave about. First of all, soundtrack. So good, so awesome. I actually have a copy of the soundtrack on my Apple Music and I listen to it regularly because I like it and I think it's awesome. Like, listen to some of the people on the soundtrack, okay? U2, Nine Inch Nails, Chemical Brothers, Missy Elliott, okay? They have Get Your Freak On on it, which is such a great song. Uh, they have an Outkast song on there, a Fatboy Slim song on there. They have this awesome fluke song called Absurd. And I know all of these songs, like just looking at the list on the Wikipedia page, I know all of the songs and they're awesome, okay? My personal favorite from the, so from the soundtrack has got to be the last song on the soundtrack, which is Devil's Nightmare by Oxide and Neutrino. And... I don't know, it's just a banger. Great, great soundtrack. I gotta, I gotta stand by it. So this movie came out in 2001, which means Angelina Jolie was on her shit when this movie came out, okay? I was watching some of the behind the scenes <laughs> footage from it and she still had her Billy Bob tattoo on her arm, which is so legendary. And um, this was like shortly after she became super awarded for Girl Interrupted and like it seems clear to me that she did this movie for funsies like she was like this sounds like fun i get to kick some ass take some names and have a good time and she killed it in this movie there's it, it doesn't seem like all that complex of a role at least to me she brought a lot of life to it she i think did a really great job because there are parts where she's kind of funny and there are parts where she's more serious and i think she nails it the overall plot itself is good. I mean, the Illuminati is such an easy enemy. Like, I don't know, I feel like it's just a fun topic to play with, and so it works really well with this type of movie. I am one of those people who I saw the first Indiana Jones movie when I was growing up, didn't really care about it, was very whatever. Like, the Harrison Ford allure has never really worked on me. I feel like a lot of his acting is either snide remarks or yelling hot take I know like I saw Blade Runner 2049 in theaters and I was like why is he yelling he's just yelling everything I don't understand um so that was how I felt about that and in comparison I think this movie to me is more charming than Indiana Jones very hot take I know but this movie did really well they don't they spent 115 million dollars to make this movie um which honestly that is a great amount of money because they did so many things practically. There were some, some things that they needed to do with special effects, which, you know, for the time they had to be really smart about. They couldn't just shoot everything in a green screen like they do now. But it made $275 million. So they made well above their means and they were easily able to make a sequel, which they did, which I haven't seen, so I'm not going to talk about it. I think that when you go into seeing a movie, you have a kind of set expectation. And a lot of the time, especially more recently, I've been kind of ditching that expectation. I've been avoiding trailers and things like that because I don't necessarily want to know what I'm going into. But with this, you can see the poster and know exactly what you're walking into. It's a fun action movie with a hot lady in it. And that's all you need to know in order to be happy with it. 
I think you can probably tell based on the shelf behind my head that I love bad stuff. I love the Twilight movies. I love The Room. I love Lara Croft. I have an entire collection of DVDs uh, on my shelf of bad movies that I adore and I think they should still be celebrated like this movie. Right now, as of April 2023, the Lara Croft, okay, I will say I do not give any power to Rotten Tomatoes, but it's a good place to find a collection of critic scores. And um, the critic score on Rotten Tomatoes for Lara Croft is 20%, which is ridiculous. The audience score is 47% on Rotten Tomatoes, which to me doesn't matter. But the IMDb rating for Lara Croft is 5.7, which I think is much more reasonable. I would be very satisfied with the 5.7. I think this movie is fun. It's quirky and it makes me laugh. Um, it's very engaging. It's not too long. It's not too short. And there are certain things about this journey that they take you on that teach you a lot about who Lara Croft is as a character. And I really like that. Uh, one of my favorite things about this movie is, okay, so Daniel Craig is in this movie and he's like, he's American. He like collects things for historical use and stuff like that. And he has kind of a rivalry with uh, Lara Croft. And I love him in this movie because one of the first things they do is they give Angelina Jolie this like sexy shower scene and then they're like "Ooh, okay fun and later in the movie they start another sexy shower scene and so you think it's going to be another Angelina Jolie sexy shower scene it's not it's a sexy Daniel Craig scene and I love that it makes it like I every time I see the movie I get excited for it because I'm like equality because that was what I thought when I was like five or six and I watched the movie, I was like, yeah, they both get sexy shower scenes. I don't know why I was allowed to watch this movie. I, there weren't very many rules as when it comes to media in my household, which was good because I could watch stuff like this. I think that uh, when a critic goes into the theater every single time expecting something to be Oscar bait, they're going to be disappointed and they're going to rate things much lower than they deserve. This is a given. And um, because 1999 was such an amazing year for film, I think there's kind of a tale in the, in the following years of like people still having that really high expectation. So very, very harsh reviews when this came out. Which is fine. I mean, Angelina Jolie was better known for Girl Interrupted probably at the time. So having her do such a different role was probably a shake for some people. I mean, her behavior in general, like, I don't understand why people didn't expect that. Because she was having fun doing her party stuff with Billy Bob Thornton, who was like 50 or something at the time. She was living her best life, okay? I don't understand why people didn't expect this. But um, I find her very charming. I find young Daniel Craig very charming. I love the bad guy in this movie. And returning to my main complaint of the movie, which is John Voight, I find him annoying um, in almost everything that I've ever seen him in. He really just, he doesn't have a good screen presence. And usually when he's on screen, he's just kind of bumbling around, not really knowing what he's doing at all. It's kind of confusing because he's had such a long career and he had such popularity in the 70s and 80s and I think he may maybe should have quit while he was ahead. Maybe his acting career is more of a gambling career, I don't know. <laughs> his existence in the National Treasure movies is completely outshined by Nick Cage. They could have gotten literally any old man and probably saved a lot of money. Nobody watches a movie for John Voight is what I'm saying. I find him very annoying. Essentially the plot of the movie is she has to steal an artifact that is a weapon before the Illuminati steals it. And I think she wants to destroy it. 
Um, she goes based on these clues that her father left behind because her father knew about it because of the Illuminati and was trying to hide it from them and kind of throw them off the trail. But now it's up to her because her father is missing. There are certain scenes in this movie that very deliberately feel like a video game level, which I love. Like one of the first scenes of the movie, she's fighting this robot. It seems very high stress, turns out to just be a training simulation. After that, she like gets ready to go to bed after her sexy shower scene. And then people break into her house and it's like, uh oh. And so she's like on these bungee cords jumping around off the chandelier onto balconies that are in her house because she lives in a castle. And it just feels very video game. It feels very fun. It's cool. I dig it a lot. The music, of course, is, I've already raved about it. It's such a plus. It really adds to the feeling of the movie. She has a really, really great chemistry with uh, Daniel Craig as well. And um, every scene that they were together, I got very excited. I really enjoyed that. I, I kind of felt like, like if you really looked deeply into this, I feel like you could kind of connect uh, Daniel Craig's American character to like Humphrey Bogart's character in Casablanca. Like he's supposed to be like a, like an American neutral. And it's a kind of, it feels like a kind of criticism of that because he is going along with things just for money. Uh, he is like, oh, well, I know they're bad guys, but I'm just doing it for the money, so it's okay. Like, that feels very American to me, and I, I, kind, of, I kind of like that. I have no idea if that's on purpose or not, but I'm deciding that it is in my head. And I also love the end of this movie because throughout the movie, uh, her butler is kind of giving her a hard time about not really taking care of herself and not uh, embracing her identity as a woman. And in the movie, you can you can kind of interpret it in two way, different ways. One is he's trying to enforce a gender stereotype on her. And the other is he wants her to not be ashamed to be a woman and feel feminine. And I feel like both can be true at the same time. Because, you know, he tries to get her wear, to wear a dress at one point. She's like, uh, as if. And... You know, as a kid, I was a tomboy, so I really identified with that. And I was like, yeah, no dresses, screw that. And um, at the end of the movie, she can fully mourn her dad because he is dead. And she kind of accepts her strengths as a Tomb Raider and as someone who's trained to fight people <laughs> and kick ass. But she also ac accepts her identity as a lady and wears a dress to kind of honor her butler and also to honor her father because she kind of is like closing that chapter of her life. But then at the end, of course, she doesn't close the chapter on being a badass. So like that's still very clear in the end as well. So I think the ending is very suitable and like it suits the movie really well. I think it's just a fun movie and I think people shit on it way too much. Um, it's definitely in like my top 20 probably comfort movies. I watch it all the time. When I say all the time, I watch it probably three times a year, which is a lot for me. I grew up on this movie and I think because of that, I, I watched it with like a very non-sexual lens as a child. So her being hot is like not very important to me as a viewer because I've maintained that mindset from when I was a kid. And I think that was, that's a good thing for me because I can kind of watch it as someone who relates to feeling very masculine and feminine at the same time and having kind of an identity crisis as a child. And so like having that portrayed on screen was, I felt very seen as a child, which maybe is like a little bit ridiculous to say from someone who was probably five or six the first time I ever saw this but I don't know I, I really liked it and I connected to it and so I will always defend it I think I there are certain things that will remain true no matter what my opinion is and that is that the soundtrack is amazing that I love that they both have sexy shower scenes and that she is so much cooler than Indiana Jones <laughs>